But we're here with my man Kurt, our mentor at Hatching Eggs, and we're he's showing us his uh, static coops. And you were saying if you had to do this all over again, but yeah, if I had to do if I had to do it all over again, and we're starting with what we know now, I wouldn't do this with the, the solid floor. The building itself, great. And if it ever came down to it, the floor was rotten out, I would just cut the floor out and ground set. And then just run on that deep footer. The deep footer you can use in the gardens, your trees, flower beds, all that. But this right here, you know, it hasn't even started composting. So would you say uh, that having it like this is a bit more labor intensive? It is. Yeah. Um, it gets dirty. Like, say, when they roost, we come in probably once a week and just throw a little two things ahead of you. Just like if you're a deep litter. Yeah. But eventually it gets to where I have to pull a tarp out. You know, you can clean it all out. And it's extremely dusty. <laughs> So you just bought one of these from one of the big box stores and just had them sit it here. Bought from one of the roadside. I don't know when we down here. I'm like, I need a coop and I don't have time. <laughs> we passed a bunch of those on the way here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another one? This is where the keys are. Okay. And they know that this is theirs, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're, they're them in. and the chickens. Yeah, the chickens will come in and get out of the sun. We had windows cut in. This, this used to be oak. This front wall. Okay. Uh, but when we built this building, we had the same guys that built that and built the front wall. Since they were here, they cut in all the windows for ventilation. Yeah. I, I like this. Side. I left the south side or the uh, west side solid because that's where all the rain comes from. Got it. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about the water running in. And those are the totes you were telling me about, that your, yeah. your geese lay in those? Geese lay in them, chickens lay in them. Here, here these eggs have been in here about five days, six days. With birds. Look at those little babies. They can't get money. Yeah. That's... But nobody wants to sit. So. Yeah, that's what I heard about the geese that the, the hens have up. They sometimes will lay or they'll half lay on it. All of a sudden, they'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then these babies. So you got three sections. You got what are these? This is Old English Gang. The who? Old English Gang Venoms. <laughs> Those are popular, aren't they? Very. Mackenzie loves showing these guys. So she shows these at some of the events you guys go to? Oh, the Welsh and the Kaibu. Oh, that's some, a straggler, huh? They hop over here and lay in the Welsh boxes. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but so this will be our first full year with this, this building. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still working out the kinks, right? Because this was here, so I just had them add on or you know, start from the three pieces of building. So we've got some grading in this back corner. I have to bring in some dirt. And so you're just realizing the, the issues? Yeah. Yeah. These are my favorites. Mm hmm. <laughs> I, I like them now. They listen now. It's taken a year. I just have to walk in there and open the door, and they just they walk, they go up. Yeah, these are if it's their day on the pond, they're up here before dark, waiting. Oh, really? So all you do is just come and open the fence. So, so how do you figure out whose day is is what? Just rotate. Every other day for the ducks. Oh, okay. So, and that's just the, when you're in the breeding season and stuff like that. Then what, when you're off season, when, it, when is your off season? Uh, May 15th will be when the drakes go in to a pen together and all the ducks go into another pen together. So, if this is more females, the females will be on the phone for two days. The drakes will go for one day and then the females will go back out. Okay. 
How did the drakes do when you initially put them all together? I'm curious about that. They're fine. They're not like roosters. But they'll... Oh, they won't fight each other. Yeah. Okay. They might chase each other around. That's why we're going to leave the females out for two days. Because if it was females on one side and the drakes on the other side, man, those jokers are trying to reach the fence and grab <laughs> them. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. But we would do this. This style building. And I would have three more, three more bays and probably a half bay that's closed off. And that's where we keep all our feed, all of our, everything would be in just like a little food shed on the end of it. Okay. If you had to do it all over again. So what's the size of this? This is 30 by 16. Okay. So each pin's 15 by 16. And with 15 for the duck, you have enough for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight. There should be eight girls in three days. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Okay. So we've had, we've had as many as 16 Cayugas. But they're only in that first, in the first pin at night. Yeah. And it kind of, so most of them just kind of lay down and just lay down and sleep. Got it. But then, yeah, when they're in there, they have full range of, of all of it. And then plus with the whole alterating with the... Uh, and then on this pin, you yeah. got... This is the Cayuga pin. Okay. So that's, they'll come back in here. This is me and this how long did we redug at the end of last summer, and then you had also uh, did the grass. We did the we sodded the grass. We brought in twenty one pallets of grass. <laughs> what we, type of grass was it? It's Bermuda. Uh, oh, so it's gonna be pretty pretty good once it's heat. That's right. right. It's gonna work. Yeah, because that summer last year it killed everything we had back there. Oh yeah. Oh, that. What did it not kill? <laughs> like we lost a an entire orchard. So how deep is this? Uh, it's, we dug it to s between seven and a half and eight foot. Oh, okay. Right, we just rented a track boat for two days from Home Depot. That's not so bad. The guy I worked with, that's what he did. Oh, okay. Like, he, he works dirt, so he just jumped on it. And nice. Start moving dirt. That's your air ray to keep the water fresh? We have to put blue dye in ours. I'm noticing yeah, you have yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. Because we've been noticing all around the edge. Is Some of our, yeah. I just put fish in here. Oh, really? Three what kind? Ago, I put 100 bluegill, uh, 100 red ear sunfish. I put 25 channel cat. And then we put about 7,000 fathead minnows. To feed the bluegills and stuff? To feed the bluegills. Those fathead minnows are like rabbits. Uh -huh. So the people that we got them from, they said as soon as you put them in there, they're going to start coming. <laughs> Wow. And that's what we want. So I, I want to kind of do that, but we got turtles, snakes, and other bluegills in our, our pond. We've got some turtles. we got a bunch of frogs here. Yeah, and also frogs. Oh, yeah. That sound like lambs. Yeah. Everything I've read has shown statistically that shipped eggs, there's a reduction in the hatch rate. Mm -hmm. Even if my hatch rate at home is 80%, as soon as I pack it up, every precaution I do, mm -hmm. everything I do, once it leaves, there's a reduction that usually happens statistically. What are your thoughts on that? Or how would you tell folks to how they can increase their uh, we can't hatch rate with uh, shipped postage. eggs? Yeah, one, once you drop it off, it's it's over for you. I mean, statistically, in general, if if they get a forty to fifty percent hatch rate on ship ship eggs, that's considered a success. Some people consider one egg hatching a success. Um, what I tell everybody that orders eggs for me, and we pack this the same way. The same, I learned from you. Same exact way. Uh, when you receive your eggs. Pick them up from the post office. You're you're having them held at the post office, right? I'm starting to. Okay, that's that's a big part because it doesn't have to sit in a truck. Like my route's four hours. So that's a conversation I need to focus on. Nah, 
I don't give them an option. Oh, okay. I tell them I need their name, address, phone number, because eggs will be held at the post office, and their email so I can send them their tracking information. Okay, so that's something I need to change. Yeah, they don't. Making that they don't get an not option. being an option. Okay. Um, so once you pick up the eggs, you want to set them on the counter. You can leave them in the foam shipper. Mm -hmm. Just set them on the counter for 24 hours and let them rest. Um, at least 24. At least. And it, I mean, if, if you can't the eggs and you see detached air cells, that's that's part of it. Um, but you know, you're going to have, the more rest you can have for the egg, the better the success. So if you let them rest for 24 hours and then you have the ability to not turn the eggs for another 72 hours. Okay. Um, it gives the eggs more time to settle, but you're not losing um, the fertility and vi viability because they're not in the incubator. Yeah. So they can definitely three to five days in the in the incubator without the turner on, and then start turning them on day three or day five, just depending on what the eggs look like. But I was curious. Uh, we had a customer that um, just reached out to us because we've been asking them to like give us updates mm -hmm. because we want to know uh, for success reasons. But she ha got two dozen and she had twenty hatch and out of uh, twenty eight. Out, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, "What did you do?" Just so we can like try to help other people. And she actually left them resting for like seventy two hours. Mm -hmm before and I think that that was part of her success most definitely yeah it just it lets it it does a few things it lets the eggs come back to room temperature it lets them recover from being jostled around the mail system for four days um, I know we're not gentle on packages it can say fragile and Oh yeah. oh yeah! Oh yeah! He's a post. Say, he's a postal guy. <laughs> this side up, and we look at it and we're like, eh, it's been on thirty-seven high-speed belts. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's not a it's not a general process, and if you think about it, it's kind of a miracle that any eggs can hatch, right? Being shipped mm -hmm. because there's people that struggle hatching their own eggs at home. They go from the nesting box to the incubator. They you still have struggles. Mm -hmm. So. Um, luckily, shipped eggs have been around a long time. The expectations have already kind of been set as far as hatch rates. What would you say those odds are? What on average? I mean, the the standard that I see is the forty to fifty percent. That's what I'm seeing. Okay. If if your intention is to start a flock and start a flock with good quality, and um. I know shipped eggs are expensive because the cost of shipping them is built into your cost of the eggs. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to start a flock and you can't necessarily afford to get a good quantity of started eggs and you don't have anybody locally that's raising the breed or the quality that you're looking for, my suggestion would be to wait. Wait until you can get a good base. So if you ordered 24 eggs, now you're looking at 12 on standard that have hatched. That's what I would consider a flock, right? Yeah. But if you hatch six, if one dies, now you're down to five. That one could have possibly been your hen. So now mm -hmm. you're raising out five roosters or it's just wait. Wait until you're prepared and, and ready to make the that investment. investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're going to end up having to do it again. After looking at all the statistics and everything, um, the advice I've started telling people, like, first, look local. If you can't get what you're looking for local, that's the only reason I would order shipped eggs because it's something I cannot get local. Uh, I think that that's the only reason somebody should order those eggs. Yeah. Right. Okay, two fibers. Oh, Lord. I want the fibers. I hope they're males so I can, we can eat them. No. Three fibros. Yes. Keep going. Yeah. As uh, many fibros you want to let go of. No. <laughs> they really are cool though. Oh, that's a cute one right there. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can see any more fibro in here. Yeah. Back them up. Oh, definitely fibro. Stop. Ah. Nope. Fire are cool.
Wait. No. <laughs> Tell everyone, what was your purpose of getting these? Well, in September, we have some of our egg layers that are going to be aging out. And I have come to really like having colorful eggs. They just kind of bring me some, some joy seeing the color. And I think it's fun for customers to have colorful eggs. So I wanted to have them for that when it comes time to age out because I do have a group that is laying eggs that um, is not gonna be aging out. So this is like part of the expansion. And I didn't know I was gonna end up with some fibro chicks but I'm super excited about the fibro chicks maybe doing a mix with my naked mix at some point. This is my sarcastic way of saying thanks to Curtis for allowing this madness to happen of this additional chicken math from a lady that doesn't do math so well. <laughs> you don't really like chickens that much. I can't tell. But we've done plenty of videos where we had Kurt on our video before. We'll put that off to the side and also in the description down below. Until the next video, let's grow together.